Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. Uh, I hope you all guys enjoyed the ship I did last episode. Uh, that was actually quite a fun build. I actually enjoyed that. I was a little disappointed about the rudder, though. I was trying to use the hover pads to get the rudder to sort of move while it was in the water, but apparently when uh, there's a structure or a grid going in the water and out of the water and you're trying to move it up top, it can't be moved. It can't be moved or... Yeah, the grid isn't recognized by the hover pads, but it wasn't working. But anyways, uh, the developers loved it. Uh, they're actually going to put it in the game menu. They might replace the train. I'm not too sure. But anyways, I had another project that was came out to do. I was actually planning on doing this last episode, and or last week when I was streaming, and that is building a giant spider again. I redesigned the motors from the from the maze labyrinth there, and uh, I think we're going to have some fun with this one. I shouldn't need any air blades at all. It should be nice and powerful. So this is going to be a little on the big side. So I'm gonna, uh, we're going to have to bring this up about 20 blocks, So which is going to be about three of these posts up. Uh, yes, we are in the desert. We're actually right next to the lava fields. So we'll see if this spider can walk on hot coal. All right, so we're going to start about here. Now, my motors are fairly big and uh, with my previous attempts at doing this I know that the body is going to have to be as light as possible so I think I'm going to actually have to bite the bullet on this one and go all the slopes just to keep the weight down I'll see if I can actually build the, the battery banks into the motors so using the hover pads to push off the batteries instead of the blocks and that way it saves me weight so I can keep the frame basically to nothing and maybe we can even put a proper shell on it. Uh, of course I will have to start with a, a block in the corner if I hit the right button here somewhere. There it is. And of course it's going to be brown. It's going to be a big old giant wolf spider. So I'm going to start here and it's going to take me a little while to do this so I'm going to do this off camera and if I can find the right keys and figure out which way I gotta go, and I will see you shortly. Okay, there's the frame that I got. So now I gotta get the motors on. I've been trying to figure out how big I was gonna do the motors. I think I don't really need to worry about the forward and back too much. It's more of the actual lift to keep it off the ground. So instead of doing two stators, I'm gonna do one on the top and bottom, and then two on the left and right. Uh, so I'm going to start with my rotating and rotating plates, and of course I never have my hot bar set up. So I'll put that there. What else am I going to need? Uh, hover pads, of course. Where am I without my hover pads? You got to get some switchboards on there. I'm still waiting for the large hover pads they're talking about. I want to see what kind of fun I can do with that, and I think that should be good for now. Well, I'm going to start with the rotating block, which was seven. And I know I, I know I always talk about this, about trying to keep certain blocks on certain hotkeys, so I always know where they are. So the first one's going to start at 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is where the first motor is going to be. And then it's going to be spaced out 20 for the next one. So the next one will be at 30, then 50, then 70. But we'll work on the first one for now so we can get an idea of what's going to happen. Uh, I actually have to do a quick calculation on hover pads because I forgot to do this off camera and I'll be right back. Uh, okay, it's going to be an astounding 576 batteries. Now, uh, me and my tricorder here we were actually talking about using generators uh, that to use the deuterium generator to power this. I would need six of them, which would be somewhere around 18 tons of extra weight. If I replace the blocks around the, ma the main stator housings here on all legs, that should only add about six tons of extra weight, so that should work. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use batteries. And let's see, so one, two, three, and it's going to be like I usually do. We're actually going to use this as the pusher plate. Uh, oh, I'm and by the way, I'm tricorder and I'm here. Yes, yes. I'm along for the ride. Yes, he's decided to take an adventure into my world. All right, so anyways, you get the idea. I gotta get this all taken care of and then we'll start working on the motor. Okay, so this is what I've got for our base. I've decided to try to get all the batteries that I need in here. I put a few extras in for lights and whatever. Maybe we'll put a 
beacon on the back of it and have it like a death ray as it tr tromps through the desert and taking out oh yeah I didn't spawn any animals this time around oh well better luck next time but anyways I think I had 74 76 batteries here or something like that and that's did you just freeze up did I I don't think so hang on okay sorry about that but any, uh, anyways this is going to be the base of our motor there's enough batteries here to power all the hover pads for the motors and a few extra lights and possibly the beacon if we decide that necessary so now we're going to start working on the this is actually going to be the the bottom section uh, there's going to be another section like this minus the batteries because we won't need them but it's going to be on the top which is going to be about 12 blocks up i figure and that's going to be a second set of our second motor that's actually going to be pushing the other direction so when i set up the clockwork motor as it switches between one side and the other side of the distributor, it's either going to be powering this side or it's going to be powering the other side. So it'll either be going forwards or backwards. And then that way I don't have to sit here and go W and S and W and S and W and S just to get the thing to move. So now this is where things start getting a little complicated because now I'm going to start building off grid and I also got to get to all connect. So from here. I can actually start building this one here. Uh, I do need sort of like a cradle. So this has got to go across. This is going to have to have some more power. So there will be, uh, I'm not going to build it here, build it here, but there's going to be the same thing, this spinner, but it's going to be on the side. So I will need three, three blocks before the rotor. And then I'm also going to have two sets of them. So that means I got to have this six blocks wide in here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then from here I go up another six, six, three, four. And then this is where our next rotating plate is going to go. So we'll go ahead and place that there. And then we get to start building the stator right off of this. Go from here with four, and this one can actually be a sh straight line because this is also where the leg is going to be connected. So, then the same thing down there, we're going to have a block here for the hover pad. We're going to have two blocks space one, two, and another one here. And on this one, uh, one set is going to there's going to be two sets of these, or four sets. Two on this side, two on the other side. Uh, one pair on each side will turn one way, the other pair will turn the other way, and that will just uh, help get more lift and lifting the legs, and also lift pushing down and lifting the body, so it actually hopefully walk, walks properly this time. But yeah, anyways, and that's going to be the outside of the hover pad, and the leg is going to be coming right off of here. And the same thing on the other side, we've got a block there. We're going to have two block gap. There's another block there. And then, of course, we have to join the linkage again. So, the rotor is on seven. And it does not go there, it goes there. Let's see if I got that in the right spot. Yes, I do. And I go back to four. Then I go down here, and we've got to do the old capture maneuver. If I don't lose my hover again. I have been looking at the the save files and I think I might be able to do some interesting stuff when the blueprinting comes out to make stuff like this comes come easier so now we gotta get of course get the build vision back up so we can see our centers of mass and we'll keep an eye on that one to make sure it doesn't change so we go up here now this one I do have to lock in because this is going to be a lot of weight let me take it wasn't items there we go. take electricity off so I can actually see what I'm doing Alright, then keep building, keep an eye on that 31, make sure it does not change. And... Like so. And then from here, of course, I have to build up. Let's go up, let's see. So we're gonna have that, we're gonna have the hover pad, so we gotta go up one more for the hover pad, and then that's the top of our stator, and then up top here, go across to the center point, which was was it right here and then this is going to be the top section so then we got three block gap where the hover pad is going to be here it's going to 
be there. No, it's going to be here. Copper pads can be there. We're going to have the rotating plate. I almost had it. It was only one digit off that time. And then the block on top. And then when I go ahead and build this one, I'm going to have to find somewhere stable, maybe coming off the stator housing itself to actually capture this point because I'm actually worried about this actually flexing in and out. So I'm going to go ahead and get this first one finished up and then I'll bring you back and I'll show you what we got. I'll even do a, a save and we'll give it a bit of a test run to see how it works. And there it is. My super mega multi-directional motor. Uh, basically what's going on is all the hover pads of course are set to hover mode. Uh, if you look, uh, these hover pads here, this one is facing down and this one is facing up. So these two are pushing against each other like I was doing with the labyrinth. So the outer two on the top push, have it going clockwise. The two in the middle have it going counterclockwise. In other words, uh, two sets on the outside push down with the legs and the ones in the middle lift the legs up. And then the same goes with the top. The ones on the top will pull the legs backwards, so they're going to be pulling forward, and the ones on the bottom are going to be... Did I do this wrong? No, 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 I got it right here. Sorry. The ones on the top are going to be move, moving the legs forward, and the ones on the bottom moving the legs back. I've got the batteries all here. I haven't got anything set up yet. I was uh, showing tricorder the terminal just to configure everything, but now I gotta wire it up. Now I have to have multiple multiple switchboards for this. One, I have to have a switchboard for the battery banks. I gotta have a separate switchboard for one of the, the, the let's call it the forward motion. Uh, the way it's gonna be working is the leg is gonna be lifting up as it's going forward. So I'm gonna have to have the bottom one, or the inner inside ones and the top ones at the same time. So I'm going to get that wired up. I'm going to have those set up on their own switch. I'm going to have the ones on the outside and the bottom on their own switch. And I'm going to have the batteries on their own switchboard. So that way everything can be color coded and then I can work out the timing because uh, it's not all going to be working in the same direction. This leg is going to be going forward and up as this leg is going to be going down and back as the one after that is doing the same thing this one's doing. And this one's going to be doing the same thing as the very last one's doing. So they're going to be sort of working opposite each other. That's definitely something that would have killed the old Unity. Probably never would have been able to load the game up ever again, but we'll see how it works. So I'll give me a moment and we'll do some wiring and I'll be right back. Okay, it is done. I have uh, put a little bit of a stubby leg on here just to stop this thing from spinning out of control. I have saved everything. I have uh, put some sunglasses on because this is going to be bright. Got the wiring set up. So I got it set up so the green one, the, the color of the switchboard determines which direction the actual leg is going, not the direction the spider is going. So the green is going to be going forwards, the red is going to be going back. So in other words, the green one is going up and forward and the red one is going down and back. Uh, I might have to rewire it now because I was, was thinking of a, of a way to actually turn this, but maybe we'll work that out later. But anyway, so I have done a save. Let's go ahead and unlock these things and take her for a test stroll. Well, we won't actually take this thing for a stroll. But, uh, did I miss some hover pads? Wait a minute. I did too. Uh, let's go check the old uh, terminal here. See what I did wrong. Uh, that means I got to build another battery. I was, I was hooking up all the, connecting all the batteries to the switchboard, and the, this battery right here would not connect. And I'm like, well, what's going on? Is it a bad battery, or, or, or what? What? And then I realized, oh yeah, I had the terminal there. It took me forever to see the white line coming off the battery to this thing. All right, so we go, go to here to the hover pads, and I just gotta go through. Yes, some of them did not get switched over. Okay, that's actually where this thing comes in handy. Because I've seen a few more. I'm just going to make sure everything is okay. If I was really being professional about my builds, I'd be naming each and every single one of them. But who says I was professional? Anyways, 
So that is all set. So that one is... No, that's not what I want. I want you. You are unlocked. Okay, we'll unlock you. Let's take that off. Hold on. That's still locked. I just realized that. Okay, are you moving? Yes, you are. Good. All right, now for you. Unlock you. And the leg is probably going to drop right down when I let this one go. But that's fine, because I actually want it to be able to, you know, sort of drop down at a rest. That's actually not moving at all. Is it stuck? Is it clipping somewhere? Could be touching a hover pad. Or a hover pad could be touching somewhere. That's what I always hate. Sometimes when you place them close like this, sometimes you get them stuck a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell from the center of mass, but, you know, that doesn't help much. But anyways, let's, like I said, I do have it saved so we can figure it out. But let's power it up and see what happens. So all I do is just gotta connect this switchboard to here and see what happens. So let's go back. Okay, it is working. Disconnect. Yeah, it's definitely sticking. It's clipping somewhere. I think the hover pad's hitting it. Hmm. Works though. It's nice and fast. I like it. I'm wondering if I gotta get rid of this block here. got to be something like that. Could be a pad too. Which one is beyond me? Well, let's find out if it's this thing here. No, it is not. So something's definitely clipping somewhere. I got figured out so yeah give me a minute and see if I can find the, the root of this sticky situation okay I've been investigating the situation and I'm sure you see it right now uh, I didn't realize it when I was building this one section here uh, I guess my first block snapped to the hover pad over there because I didn't I just noticed that section now but I saw over here you can actually see the gap down here so what happened is when I was building across here, uh, when I went to go snap to this block, it snapped to the hover pad instead. So I built this entire section on that hover pad. So that means I just got to rebuild this one section and I'll be right back. Okay, I have rebuilt. So all that's left to do is I have saved it. So we unlock everything. And uh, I actually... Did I leave the leg on this save? No, I didn't. Uh, let me actually lock everything again. Actually, yeah. Let's do it from here. I'm going to do... Just stick a long conveyor on. Yes, I, I'm actually going to use the 8 long conveyor. And it's just for this. So I'll take that lock out. Uh, yes, I was worried about snapping. Unfortunately, I actually missed it. So that's not the right button. No, it's not. Uh, and the reason I'm going to use this is there's absolutely no chance of anything actually binding to the side of this thing. Uh, technically, that's the same with the hover pads, but that was not the case. Okay, so now let's give it a test. Let's see what happens. Go in here. We'll access you. Go to uh, the active block. So we'll unlock everything. And it dropped. That was the whole problem. I was looking at that gap. I couldn't figure it out. Okay, and I actually put the controls on the wrong side, but this should technically work. So let me grab you. And... Okay, so it's down and back. 
that goes up and forward so as you can see the leg moves up and it goes forward actually I think we can actually go back here and we can actually see it better yes we can all right so when I disconnect that that drops down but at the same time it gets powered so that's the backward stroke of course I will have to set the stops here a little bit more but so far this is relatively good of course I won't be manually doing this this will be all controlled by a timer distributor sort of idea and yeah just like so so with that I'm gonna go ahead and uh, repeat this seven more times it's not gonna happen tonight but you'll definitely see it so uh, I'll bring you back and here we are at the next day uh, it is actually uh, technically the next next day for me it is about oh probably about three hours of work since I last brought you here but there we go uh, I'd have to recalculate the popper pads originally it was 384 minus 32 so we're looking at 362 hover pads batteries we're at 640 uh, each one of the bottom areas has 80 batteries and then I have a lot of hover pads I haven't configured anything I did have to remove the switchboards uh, disconnect all the wiring I'm gonna have to redo this next episode uh, yes we're gonna split this one up into two uh, just because this is a lot of work and I wanna get something up today uh, but yeah, so uh, I, I actually opened this up a little bit more. I put a little brace up here just for aesthetic purposes. I know it's not going to make an absolute difference, but considering how bulky this is, this actually might work. I, you can tell those things have a lot of power. I actually might be able to get bigger legs, but we'll do some testing with that. I'm also going to, the reason why I have to take the switchboards out anyways is I want to set up a steering mechanism. And the steering is basically... I'm going to be disabling probably half the hover pads or even just two on the one side we're turning towards. So if we're turning right, I'll disable a couple of pads on this side so the legs move slower. They have uh, less movement in the amount of time of uh, the clockwork engine, which should have enough room. We could probably have it set up in here and then have the, the main switchboards over at that end or something like that. But that's definitely not a problem. It might be good if this has enough power. I actually want to go detailed on this like I did with Lucy. You know, I should try to make this look like a spider. He's got the room. he got some big legs. Legs will probably go right to about there. I mean, massive. Put a saddle on the back and <laughs> ride it around the desert. Lava fields. But yeah, uh, I, like I said, I'm going to end this episode here. Now, next episode, we're going to get the wiring set up, get the distributor, the legs, and more than likely the shell. We'll see how it goes. But anyways, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.